Uh, good morning, everyone. 5th of July, 2024. I'm here in Bridger National Forest. We're going to be doing a peek here in the Southern Wind Rivers. This is in Wyoming. As you can see, it's just before sunrise. All the morning chatter of the birds. I'm just off of this little two track. Right near the main road here. I'll catch and drive several miles up till I get to the big sandy trailhead. And from there, I'm gonna be taking a trail many miles. It's gonna be a long day till I get to Jackass Pass. And from there, I'm gonna climb Mitchell Peak. At least that's the goal. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. This is a very popular area. The Wind Rivers have some incredible scenery and this trailhead is an access point for one of the main areas known Turn as Circle of Towers. And actually I might be able to move back in here. Actually you know what? I'm gonna take this spot right here. Okay, so this is a main access point to the winds. My car registered 29 degrees Fahrenheit out, and you can see definitely some frost on top of the vehicles that have been parked overnight here. Quite a sharp contrast to back home where it's supposed to be 112 degrees, and it's supposed to be triple digit heat, uh, at least when I get back too. So I'm definitely going to enjoy these cooler temps while I have them. It's supposed to warm up nicely though. Um, my peak that I'm headed to, Mitchell Peak, uh, GPS says as the crow flies, 6.66 miles. So those are some great numbers to have. Anyway, the sun's going to rise up here soon, so I better get started here in the Bridger Wilderness. Here's a nice view of Square Top Mountain. I won't have time to visit that, unfortunately. But this is an overall map of the Wind Rivers. The Northern Winds is where Wyoming's highest point, Gannett Peak, is located right there. That is definitely on my to-do list. It's a multi-day adventure. And this is where I am right here. You can see where other people have pointed. I'm going to be taking this trail here. It should be relatively flat. Jackass Pass. Mitchell Peak is just to the east. And then this right here is the famed Cirque of the Towers. It's definitely a chilly hike. You can see the morning sun hitting the first of the mountains. Got some morning mist coming up over the Big Sandy River. Up in these high meadows. Slowly warming up. The winds, uh, it's grizzly country. So they reintroduced grizzly bears into the area back in, I think, 1996. And they did it up in Yellowstone, the Tetons as well, I believe. Possibly even the Absorcas. So this will be my first major stop. This is Big Sandy Lake. We're about a six, seven mile power walk. Pretty easy trail. This is the first significant lake before you get to Jackass Pass. So there's Mitchell Peak, my destination. Still got about two miles to get anywhere near the summit. I don't remember what the names of these peaks are. They're all 12,000 feet. Lake is really calm this morning. Now that right there, that is the sheer north face, I believe, of East Temple Peak. 
I know a few people who've climbed that peak from college. Pretty impressive face. You can see all the glacial sculpting, some of the leftover erratics. So my next destination is going to be another lake, a lot smaller, called North Lake. And it's about a mile going up the valley in the direction of my peak. some lake this way the direction I'm gonna be heading so here we see in front of me Warbonnet Peak forms the eastern side of the Cirque of the Towers the rest of the towers are behind the peak kind of forming a u-shape it's a low 12,000 footer peak and it looks like, well, I can't see behind this false summit, but it looks like you could summit it pretty easily from this side. A class 3 scramble. This trail has more marmot tracks than human. There's one right in the rocks over there. He's not moving, so it might be hard to see him. There's another one in the rocks. Or Bonnet Peak, I think that's Pingora Peak. It's all part of the Circuit of the Towers. Looking over to the impressive face of Temple Peak. Here's North Lake. Little pika that was squealing at me. Oh, he sees me. <laughs> went hiding there's the trail there and I'm going to start spurring off now climbing up high up this gully you can really see the glacial striations the glacier flowed down this valley Getting higher up. Both approaches here have slick faces or vertical faces. So I got this nice little ramp straight ahead where the creek's coming down. And that's how I'm gonna go. Straight up that way in an angle to the left. You know, we're high up on the tundra now. Clouds forming. Nice view of East Temple to the left. Temple Peak to the right. I believe that's Deep Lake, you can see. Very photogenic spot. Big sandy lake where I was. North Lake. And you can start to see more peaks of the Cirque of the Towers. I just got to get around this section here. Angle to the left to a vantage point. The true summit is somewhere over there. That is the true top of Mitchell Peak. I'm going to hit that in a second. First, I'm going to hit this little false summit. Oh, wow. Some view. It's typical Wind River beauty. <laughs> it's too bad the sun's in the wrong side. You get some better shadowing of the cirques, but that's alright. I need to 
you see a trailway below. Jackass Pass is somewhere right in there. Arrowhead Lake. Still got some snow. And at North Lake. Big Sandy. This is it. The summit of Mitchell Peak. Check out that view. It's looking into the Wind River Peak area. The incredible circle of the towers and just a lot of sheer walled peaks. The furthest peaks you can see, you can actually see Gannett Peak, the highest point in the state. It has a nice little snow cap on top of it. That's all part of the north winds, uh, an equally hard to access area. A lot of this turf, especially on this side, is part of the Wind River Indian Reservation. So it really makes the access points for any part of this mountain range particularly difficult. Where I came from is one of the easier ones, which is why it was so vehicle packed. So elevation wise, uh, I don't remember the exact number, but I'm at about 12,400 feet. The northern winds, a lot of those peaks are the 13,000ers and most of the highest peaks in the state are up in that direction. I was figured maybe you could see the Tetons, but I think that is the direction of the Tetons and of course the highest peaks in the state are blocking it. The Grand Teton, by the way, is the second highest point in the state. It's only 30, 40 feet lower than Gannett Peak. So I'm going to spend some time up here, find a summit register. I might tag this uh, peak adjacent to me. Okay, so I ventured just a few feet from the summit to check out the north face. And here is a nice sheer drop. That rock there is overhanging. I don't think there's a summit register, or if there is, it's under the rocks here. There may have been one that was secured here, like one of those Sierra Club boxes, but clearly it's been removed. All right, getting close to the saddle. My next peak is right there. You see that rock over there? It's like a capstone. It's held up by two rocks on the side and one rock on the right side. That is the weirdest thing ever. I just have to get over the snow. Still a little bit more to the summit. All right. Here we are on top of the second summit. GPS says this is called Dogtooth Peak. We get to the southern end of the winds. Circa the Towers area. There's the peak I was on earlier. This summit, I'm just seeing the cairn. No summit register. So, the wind's pretty relentless up here. So, I think I'm gonna dip. And I'm just gonna go straight down. Hit the slick bedrock and catch uh, my trail. I can see it kind of in that green meadow in the middle of the screen. Slow going. A lot of boulder hopping. So 
So there's where I came from, Dogtooth, Mitchell Peak. I came up that way. Those are the towers. I'm just going to follow this all the way down until I hit the trail or get near to the lake, whichever comes first. The lighting is looking really good. Coming back onto the trail, there's a couple parties ahead of me and there's a big party behind me. Okay, we're back at the junction here. Big sandy lake. about half a mile to go before I'm back at the trailhead. Well, that was a good hike. Two peaks and all that. Uh, my GPS says I did just over 19 miles uh, round trip. So that was definitely a jaunt. 